Building apps with large language model features sounds exciting until you actually do it. If you've ever tried building something with LLMs, you've probably hit this wall. You get a response. It looks okay, but is it actually good? Is it reliable, repeatable? Who knows? LLMs are kind of like black boxes. You give them a prompt, you cross your fingers and you hope the output makes sense. But when you're building real products with them, that's just not enough. You need to design your prompts carefully and make sure they actually produce the results you want and consistently. Evaluating LLM outputs is painful. Comparing models, even worse. It's a lot of guesswork unless you build your own evaluation logic or use a good tool. And what about costs or performance under different scenarios or even safety like bias, harmful responses, hallucinations? Try making sense of all that across hundreds of outputs and manually. Good luck. So yeah, the potential of LLMs is massive, but getting there is messy unless you've got the right setup. If that sounds familiar, you're in the right place. And hey, if this video is helpful, do me a favor and hit the like button. It really helps the channel and lets me know you want more content like this. In this video, I'll walk you through how we can actually solve these problems. From prompt testing to evaluation, comparison and even running things in production. We'll look at two real use cases that I think most engineers can relate to. One where we analyze metadata from data pipelines and another one where we analyze a small chatbot helper for answering engineering related questions. And we're going to do all that using Arato AI. They reached out and asked me to check out their platform because they thought I might appreciate it as an engineer and they were actually right. They're also sponsoring this video, by the way. Arato is a full stack platform that helps you go from messy prompt chaos to a clean production ready AI setup with proper evaluations, model comparisons and real collaboration built in. Basically everything you need if you're working with LLMs beyond just playing around. I'll show you how the interface works, give you a feel for the notebook experience and walk through both use cases step by step. By the end of this, you'll know what Arato can do and more importantly, how it can make your LLM projects a lot more structured and scalable. All right, let's get some hands-on time with Arato. All right, so when you go to arato.ai, you can click here, the start free button, create a free user and start for free. I already done this. And then you come to this page with a bit of information and also two sample projects that you can explore. But what we're going to do is we're going to just click your plus and create us a new notebook. And what you can do here, you can give this notebook a title. Let's call this metadata and you can give this a prompt. This is our, let's say prompt one, just okay. And here you can then select your model. And what I have done is basically I already configured OpenAI, but you can use here Anthropic, you can use Vertex, Azure, Bedrock, XAI. And just how this works with OpenAI, you select yourself the model that you want. I Let's start here uh, with O4 Mini, and then you add your API key. And for that, you just go to OpenAI, create yourself a new secret key, and then copy that out, and then you have that here. And with that, it says OpenAI key is valid. You do a save and that's it. Now, what you have here is you have here the user prompt. This is basically what you feed the LLM. And what we also need is system so that we tell the LLM, okay, what are you? What do you need to do? All right? Then below here, we have our data set. Of course, this is the data set. And then we can add evaluations to this as well. And for this goal, uh, what I have thought is with ChatGPT, I created a small data set that shows pipeline executions with successful pipeline executions and errors. And you can look at this on my GitHub. I also put this for you in the description, uh, arado.ai is they called. And I have two in here, one for the metadata evaluation and for the chatbot. You can have the CSV file that I have created and also the things that we need to fill in 
for our pipeline. So as a system prompt, that means we're telling it what it is. We say you are a helper that analyzes metadata from data pipeline executions. Give short and concise answers about if the pipeline failed or succeeded. If there is no error message, it succeeded. So tell that it succeeded. If it failed, tell the pipeline name, date, the error message. Only treat events as errors when the error makes sense. What we do is, okay, we say let's add a data set here. And we're going to select ourselves a data set, create a new data set. Let's call this metadata from pipelines. And then we drag in our data set. Whoop. We see a preview and we do save. And then we see all the data. Basically, we have the pipeline name, last runtime, duration, minutes, the status, the owner, trigger type, the error message. And we, let's ignore the evaluation stuff. And the idea is the status we leave out, right? We don't know the status. So how are we going to tell that LLM what is our data? We can also copy that in. And here we can just tell it pipeline the parameters the pipeline name is your pipeline name and with these brackets you then connect this basically to your data set pipeline name last runtime duration min owner and the error message and we could, should actually call this message but it doesn't matter and then we go and you see here now it's blue these columns that means these columns are actually used so here we have that. And then we'll look at evaluations. Let, let's add some evaluations. What we add here, um, or what you can add, you add co coherence, creativity, harm prevention. We are going to add prompt detail. And um, basically you can also malicious evaluations, controversy checks, here criminal content, sensitivity. You can look for bias or racism and so on. And we are also going to add here our accuracy test. Again, a lot of possible options here. So we have that. We have our GPT for mini. We have our data. We have our prompt. We have the input. And then let's run this. And what it's going to tell us here. It's going to show us the result. We can already see here accuracy. And the accuracy gives us the idea here. What is basically is it accurate or the prompt details if it has enough details and we can also see here so we see result one 100 success rate it took 1.3 seconds it had 1.7 thousand tokens into the lm and 265 out and we also see our gpt40 mini all right now let's make a change here let's go just up here and let's modify this and we just Put in some stuff here that makes absolutely no sense right and then let's run this again so now as you can see now we only have the validation success rate 96.65 percent so you can go down here and you can actually look okay what's wrong here the accuracy is wrong right this says failed the response contains an error message that appears to be random gibberish which does not provide meaningful information about an actual error right so we now we know with the 40 mini this actually generates us an error you can click on this and you can see more like this is the result um, it says failed but that's not correct and you can also see here your validation stuff right the response contains an error and the prompt detail this said clear instruction for analyzing the pipeline and so on so this maybe this we actually would not need but the actual accuracy here is very very helpful now also, you can go down here and you can see information like word count distribution. You can also see the run costs, how much this costs cent wise, four cents. We can see the latency and the success percentage. Now, what can we do here now that we have this problem? We can just say, okay, uh, instead of using O4 Mini, let's just use here uh, the 40. I mean, 40 Mini. Let's just use the 40 here. Save. And then we run it again and let's look at the new evaluation. All right. So now we see 100% success rate. It took one second instead of with the other. How much did the other take? 0 0.7 seconds. It took one second. Basically the same uh, input and output here. And we can look at this. 
and now we can go to our column with the gibberish or the row with the gibberish here and we see here it actually says the uh, pin processing what failed on with an error message that does not make sense therefore it's considered a success okay <laughs> okay that's that's a bit of the mm, yes did we want that mm, maybe so now we could go and we could make another specification here let's just try this market success otherwise let's just run this what does it say now okay still says 100 percent let's go to our gibberish here and now it says the pipeline succeeded processing job succeeded the error message does not make sense okay kind of but i think it's it's okay for us right it said that or it understood that it succeeded and this is how you can basically play around with this and make sure that the output is exactly what you want and uh makes sense right so you can analyze this now think of this as you have thousands of rows in here you can very easily see what is my accuracy and is that what i want and you can actually look if you have when you have in here the examples that don't work you can evaluate them very easily now let's go to the second example and in this notebook this is our data engineering helper right we're using 4.0 in here so what we're going to tell it here, we say you are a chatbot helping engineers with finding solution uh, to problems they ask about. Give clear help and show them options that they have. Only stick to the three answers from the context because I don't want it to blabber about stuff and keep the answers short. Oh, that's actually the wrong column here. We need to add this to the system permit. So then let's just add our data set as well. Create a new data set. And let's bring in here our data. This is engineering Q&A. Save. So here's the data set. The idea with this is we have a problem in this as a configuration, like a data pipeline frequently fails due to sh schema shift in the source database. How can you handle this? And then you have three answers that the uh, chatbot should actually answer you. And I also added in here an example response, a response that we look uh, for, basically, right? We want to have. So the cool thing with this is now what, again, we can configure this so that it actually uses, um, uses our information. Basically, we say use a question. That is the problem here. And then we have the context, which is answer one, two and answer three. We are using GPT-40 and then we can actually also uh, add some evaluations here. We can, again, we can say, let's just add our prompt detail again and our accuracy again. We can also add the um, helpfulness if we want. I actually haven't tried this. It's just find that interesting now that I do this. And then we just say, okay, we're using 4.0. Let's run and let's see the results. And the cool thing with this is now we have a similarity score here, right? We have similarity uh, 77.51, uh, right? We have a, a idea or we get an idea on how similar is this actually to what we want, right? We also see here the uh, semantic similarity score. We see a word count distribution. How many words are there in the answers? Again, the run cost, this was eight cents. And we see um, the average latency and the success rate. Yeah, it's basically, that's not really an issue here. I just want to show you that you can actually uh, do this here and you can see also uh, some accuracy information. We can see, let's find someone here. This is 92%, right? The, we see here our expected output. Sure, here's how you can approach this. One, two, three, information. And then these are solid options depending on your exact setup. And the result here is actually this answer without the fluff around it. So maybe we want to actually add more here. Let's see where's, the, where's one where that is actually not that good. We have 84 here. 
and we can see we can look at the tokens again we can see here the evaluation what's the lowest here 68 percent so you can see this actually here i had for the result a lot like a bit more blah blah in the actual result but nothing around it and yeah we can see how long this took now the cool thing is you can now say okay let's add a different model right let's go to the 01 mini or something and let's run this and then you can see is this still valid or is the, how much is the uh, similarity then in this as well all right and as you can see this is a lot worse right we have here 58 similarity only and what's the worst one here come on update 54 47 45 40 let's look at the 40 here similarity score right so we wanted here sure how you can approach this one two three um, this example and it said here improving the performance of sql joins and so on and so on and it Boy, it added here more information and more and more. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You see what I mean here? This has a ton of text. So this is actually not what we wanted, right? The validation is still is still okay. But um, this is not what we wanted. You can also see now here the word count distribution. A lot of words, right? 800. This had tokens out 14,000. 14, and this had tokens out 669 right this was a lot more expensive than the other it took also a lot longer right so this way you can really very well analyze what's happening you can now we could say okay um we could modify this as well and we could say okay start with a certain prompt always all right so much about this what you can also do here now this is just for testing right you can also add this into production so you could say okay um i have my process ready and you can create an, an api key here and then you can actually add this information to your actual code and so basically in production you will have your api lock and you will see how many failures you had you will see the costs you will see the average latency and you will see basically the tokens in out and so on you will see the success rate which is pretty cool when you want to connect it your code to arado and it basically sends the information over that's it for the hands-on part i gotta say i really like arado what stood out to me is how easy it is to test prompts and actually understand what's going on you get real insights into output quality costs and latency all in a one view and the similarity score super useful when you're iterating and want to compare different runs another thing that i find super helpful is how flexible the evaluation system is you can choose from a wide range of built-in evaluations things like accuracy conciseness relevance and depending on your use case you can also add things like bias checks or filters for harmful and controversial content that part is probably less relevant for most engineering focused use cases but it's great that it's there if you need it personally i found the accuracy evaluation especially helpful it just makes it so much easier to measure quality in a structured way without doing it all manually one thing i'd love to see in the future is the ability to define multiple models in a notebook and have it automatically run the same workflow over each one then compare output side by side that would be super helpful for model selection but even as it stands now arado makes working with llms a whole lot more structured scalable and honestly less painful if you're building with llms go give it a try you can create a free user and see for yourself how much it helps the link to arado is in the video description below Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.